Yes, lessons from representing library metadata in OCLC researchers linked data wiki based prototype too long. We called it Project Passage. <laughs> uh, it was a pilot pro 10 month pilot project that we completed last year um, in collaboration with 16 OCLC member libraries in the United States. Its objective was to evaluate a framework for reconciling, creating, and managing bibliographic and authority data as linked data entities and relationships. It provided a sandbox for hands-on experimentation. How do I create a linked data representation for the resource I am looking at now? How does this process compare with the method I may have already used or uh, used to describe the resource? It was an open-ended exploration that met catalogers where they are with the resources on their to-do lists. And we pre-populated our Wikibase instance with 1.2 million entities from matches among Wikidata, the Virtual International Authority file, and WorldCat. Our project report was published just last August, and I am dying with curiosity. How many of you in this room have read the report already? Raise your hand if you have a handful. Okay, good. Well, for you, this will be a quick recap of what you've already read. And for the rest of you, maybe my presentation will inspire you to read it. Um, so, uh, the Project Passage ecosystem. Uh, we took advantage of all of the functionality in the Wikibase system, shown here, from left to right, data import, media wiki functions, including the user interface, and the triple store. It enabled us to create a fully configurable environment for experimentation with many features for editing, crowdsourcing, native multilingual support, and full support for linked data creation. These features were mostly hidden from human users so that metadata librarians were free to concentrate on the work they wanted to do and not the technical details of a linked data implementation. What I've highlighted here with the red arrows are two functions we added in response to feedback from our project passage participants. A retriever to import data from other sources and an explorer interface so pilot participants could see the impact of the relationships they added as part of their workflow. So project passage participants needed a way to bring in entities already defined elsewhere rather than create them from scratch. This is a view of the Project Passage Retriever with results for the keyword search Elizabeth Gold in American Neuroscientist. The Retriever used three different APIs that were available for Wikidata, VF, and FAST to look for matches. It also used the identifiers associated with the matching results to check in Project Passage to make sure that the entity wasn't already available there. The Project Passage Retriever used the Wikidata API to retrieve data for the entity description and used, in, used a built-in crosswalk to look for the Wikidata properties that had an equivalent property in Project Passage. And in the last step, it displayed a selected entry in a web form where a human could review it and make modifications if needed before adding the entity to the Project Passage Wikibase instance. In some ways, the biggest takeaway was that the various projects trying to model bibliographic data all tend to identify the same problem in areas of difficulty. But collectively, we haven't found a way to synthesize or share out our modeling problems more broadly. And while some communities have been better about making visible their decision making than others, in general, we need to focus more effort on mapping our modeling decisions and being explicit about when and why we diverge from existing models in machine readable ways. Where partner communities fundamentally disagree on modeling decisions, federated wiki bases combined with vocabulary and ontology mapping has a lot of appeal for libraries and other communities that are unwilling to cede control over their data model, but are willing and eager to share the data themselves. Pause. 
For many library communities, a federated model is currently the only way that could even be considered, though that may change in time as we all become more comfortable working with multiple vocabularies and data models. During weekly office hours, Project Passage pilots, partners, showcased some of the use cases they were working on in describing resources and the related entities in the wiki-based structure highlighting the issues they encountered, which often led to additional features or properties. These are some of them. Translations, a digitized map, a poster for an event, a musical work associated with an event, a digitized postcard, a photo within an archival collection, and exercising Wikibase's embedded multi-script capabilities with a person entity. We all learned a lot. These use cases also revealed patterns or archetypes in a pool of common knowledge. Most of all, it was a lot of fun. Now, in the following uh, slides, I'm going to point out some of the details about these use cases from the Project Passage report. So translations were one of the first Project Passage use cases and a homework assignment. We imported from WorldCat 37 different translations of Heidegger's Sein und Zeit. Each translation was its own entity with the property translated from linked to the original German work. There was a temptation to also add translated to to the entity of the original work, but that would mean that you would have to re-edit and edit that entity for the original work each time a new translation was added. So instead, the Explorer interface showed that adding the inverse relationships was not needed, and people could see the results of their entries without leaving the metadata creation workflow. But first, these are the passage entities retrieved by a Sparkle query within the Wikibase instance that had a translated from statement for Zein und Zeit displayed in a timeline. I chose to display in the timeline the statements for language of the translation, the translated title, the translators, and the date. The four circled here are for Japanese translations, each by a different translator. Some translators are better than others, especially for languages as different as German and Japanese, which is why it's so crucial to identify each of the respective translators. And this visualization far exceeds what we can do now uh, with raw MARC records. And here is the Explorer interface that allowed the metadata creators to verify that all of the inverse relationships were indeed represented. In this case, we show the original work, Sein und Zeit, was translated into other languages, as shown by the red arrow. The Explorer Discovery layer also pulled the images from Wikimedia Commons and descriptions from BBpedia. So it also served to remind us that the free text descriptions we've put into our MARC records could be pulled in from other sources instead in a linked data environment. The schematic shown here shows the Wikibase entities uh, for the content relationships in the postcard depicting Princess Maria Josepha of Saxony, the sister-in-law of Franz Ferdinand, the Archduke of Austria, whose assassination in Sarajevo, Serbia in 1914, sparks at World War I. It illustrates how we can specify a temporary role during a specific time period, as she served as a nurse only during World War I. The object described in Wikibase is actually the postcard depicting a person. In this use case, illustrates the use of depicts for both the main image of a map of Concord, Massachusetts, and a section of Middlesex County, as well as the inset of Ralph Waldo Emerson's dwelling and an obelisk monument. This supports searching for each image within an image, a level of granularity that cannot be expressed in our legacy mark records. We also found that we needed to modify the ontology we had imported from Wikidata. The Thoreau, the surveyor of the two ponds in the map, it was initially connected to the description by the contributor property, as surveyor was not defined as a property. 
Of course, he's more widely known as an American philosopher and writer. But in this specific case, his role is surveyor. So we added surveyor as a property to the Project Passage ontology, allowing a more precise description of his description to the map. In this case, we represent a sacred musical composition commissioned for and performed at the consecration of Florence Cathedral in 1436. The items and properties describing the musical score, the consecration event, and the interconnections between the two were all added to the brief entity for the musical work that was imported into the passage uh, from Wikidata using the retriever. It produced a network of relationships that exceeds the detail currently represented in corresponding mark-based library authority files. It also highlighted a common question from all of our use cases. How to share all of these enrichments back to Wikidata or other relevant Wikibase instances? The figure shows that the Nufer Rosarum Flores commemorates the consecration of the Florence Cathedral. But the inverse is also true. The concentration was commemorated by the motet. This inverse relationship could be automatically generated and revealed in the Project Passage Explorer interface, as shown in this slide. Yes, it shows that the consecration of Florence Cathedral was commemorated by that musical piece. The photograph illustrates here, in contrast to the map example, that the, the, the pick statements complements the subject statements inherited from the existing metadata for the image. The pics was good for picking out who or what, what is in the photograph, but subject is needed to state what the scene is about. It reveals issues about context building for items in a collection and how to represent narrative or exploratory, explanatory text about the resource that establishes context, identifies content, and engages in commentary. This photograph also provided a starting place for describing archives in the passage editing workflow. As an item in a collection within a research institution is shown in the second graph. The passage descriptions for the archive were a byproduct of the need to describe the photograph. Given the tradition of the narrative and other text-based descriptions, archives would seem to benefit most from workflows that facilitate creating structured data because so little is otherwise available. But the passage experience revealed we need much more community discussion to produce models redrawing the line between structured and textual data and best practices for both. Now, Sun Yat-sen is an example where the same, same entity with the same identifier can be edited and displayed in different languages and writing systems. This is the interface with English, and there's the, and there's the one with Chinese. Um, so different people with different language skills can go and just enter the data in their own writing systems, not worrying about how it might be transliterated or how it might be shown in different writing systems. And because it has the same identifier, then that, per, that one identifier can be linked to either, in this case, the Chinese or the English. Or if you go to Wikidata even now, you will find for that same I, Wikidata identifier, different forms of that same name in various other writing systems. So how that shows up even now is shown in this slide, where we can see for the same Wikidata identifier, we now have information, um, structured information for the same entity displayed in Chinese, French, Russian, Arabic, and in Hebrew. They're all tied to that same Wikidata identifier representing the same entity, but the information is presented in the preferred language and script of the user. So, a recap. To populate knowledge graphs with library metadata, we needed tools like the retriever to facilitate the import of data created elsewhere, and the explorer to allow librarians to see the results of their effort without leaving the metadata creation workflow. 
this was especially important to quench the temptation to include inverse relationships, which, which could be shown through a discovery application instead of inside the data itself. Most use cases demonstrated that we could enrich the descriptions in structured data with a precision that exceeded current library practices. But some use cases required that we add properties in terms not represented in the Wikidata ontology. Some of the use cases demonstrated many areas where the entity descriptions could be greatly enriched. But that raised the question of how to share back those enhancements with the Wikidata source or the growing number of relevant Wikibase instances now being installed by a number of different libraries. So there's an urgent need for us to look at interoperability. And with the embedded multi-script support, people could add structured data in their own writing systems and thus minimize the need to also add transliterations as in the current library practices. The ability to change one's language interface replaces the language of cataloging we use now. So when we reflect on some of these lessons, I think the, one of the most important is the emphasis on what entities matter to this object rather than what, how do I describe the item in hand. It also shows that the traditional distinction between authority and bibliographic data basically disappears. It doesn't, in whatever is in an authority record now or a bibliographic record now, can become just an entity. We need, no matter what, it was obvious that we always needed best practices. Um, participants were always um, asking for guidance about what statements, what properties that were needed. And the more diverse the community that we serve, the more best practices will be needed. Uh, we also found that narrative data is crucial for digital and archival collections. So much so that after this pilot, OCLC launched a new Archives and Special Collections Linked Data Review Group, which is working on now to define the requirements for data that need to be reflected in a linked data environment. And although members of the crowd could have expertise to contribute to the library metadata, pilot participants raised concerns about whether encouraging unbedded information from unknown sources would dilute the integrity of curated library data. I actually see a number of smiles in the audience at that statement, so it's probably what you've heard of also. Um, but the key issue raised the pilot was the long-term sustainability of a local wiki, wiki base instance. For a short-term pilot-like project passage, a local wiki base instance was expedient as it provided a fully functioned but private and configurable space to try out a wide range of use cases and minimize the consequences of failure. And nobody else would see those failures. The proliferation of other Wikibase instances raised the specter of library resource descriptions continuing to be represented in separate data sets. So how to share the enhancements done in Project Passage with Wikidata or other Wikibase instances or how do different Wikibase instances share their respective enhancements with each other? How do you ingest data created by those other Wikibase instances? Technically, all Wikibase instances will likely have an architecture compatible with linked data principles, offering the promise of interoperability with data published both inside and outside library domains. So I leave you with that. There's the URL. Uh, which also includes all data about OCLC researchers' work on linked data and including that Project Passage report. Thank you. Thanks, Karen. I think this, uh, for me at least, this transported the spirit quite well, so how, um, how people actually uh, begin to, to um, enjoy and, and, and have fun um, working with the entities and becoming aware of the entities. That yeah, it was, was really a lot of fun. Even if you have no intention of using Wikibase in your real life, playing with it is a lot of fun. <laughs> <laughs> and um, yeah, thank you too for, uh, for the, um, this reading recommendation, the report. <laughs> um, 
but while we're still here, uh, there's there's a chance to ask Karen um, questions about uh, yeah. Wikibase and the experience. What are the odds that another Karen would ask me a question? <laughs> we still don't know how many of us there are here. <laughs> Is there, <clears throat> are you able to uh, export from the Wikibase? In other words, I'm curious if others would like to play around with your data and see, for example, I, I assume that you had to define your own data elements or you, you brought in the wiki? We brought in, we, we did a culling of the wiki data properties that were brought in. And then we found that there were things we needed, like with the map, with the music, there were a number of specific terms that were missing entirely from the wiki data. So that's one reason why a wiki data, uh, a separate wiki based instance is attractive, because you can then just add them. We, you know, we have control over our own wiki based instance. In wiki data, you could also ask for additions to the property, but then that goes through their own review committee. Mm -hmm. So. Um, we do have a, the, we closed a project passage, we, you know, because the participants felt free to experiment precisely so nobody else would see their errors, you know. It was meant to be, you know, a free-for-all play, find out what we can learn and so forth. So to answer your immediate question, no, that data is not available, but um, our guidelines, our recommendations, data. we did keep, that's still live. The Internet Archive is hosting our help portal. So you can at least see the guidelines and recommendations we came up during the course of the project. But can you see what data elements you made use of? Um, I can't remember whether that's part of the help portal or not. Well, okay, that can be um, researched afterwards. Yeah. The help portal is also on that link. Are there more questions for Karen? As a curator uh, of a special collection and and also of a uh, heavy user of Wikidata, I am very interested um, in uh, the project you mentioned about uh, special collections and uh, if you could elaborate a little bit on that, it would be very interesting. Yeah, we put out um, a call among the OCLC Research Library Partnership, which includes 130 some research libraries, but not just research libraries, also um, independent research library institutes, um, specialized collections. And we gathered 15 of basically mostly archivists, but also special collections metadata librarians. So it's both the ones who are dealing with rare books and manuscripts, but also the ones, who, the archivists who are dealing with literally, you know, kilometers worth of stuff, you know, that they're trying to bring order to. And what we're trying to do, we, we said, don't worry if you don't know linked data, because that's always the thing, oh, I know nothing about linked data. So I, don't worry about the how, just tell us what. What is it that you put in your finding aids or your inventory or your special collection notes, which now in free text, what is most important to convey as structured data? You know, let's make it as a uh, collective exercise to parse those notes and say, okay, you have this information, we can parse that into specific data elements. And we'll do that. We'll figure out the how, you just tell us the what. So it's short term. We hope to get everything done by first quarter of 2020. So we'll have a report soon after that. Yeah. We don't want vital information to be hidden in a bunch of free text as much as possible. Some narratives, that's what Wikipedia is about, right? A lot of narratives. But we want to focus on what is most needed to include in structured data related to resources and special collections and archives. It's a fun group. I always deal with fun groups. That's good for you. Um, we are almost at the end of the official time. If there was another question we could 
handle that, but there isn't even one. So thanks again, Karen. And from